Hi everyone, I'm making today's video about React Global State Management. So I've been a little annoyed recently at how much boilerplate code it takes to um, just share a, a global state variable among different components in React. Sometimes I, I just, I don't ask for much. I don't need a bunch of complex functionality that Redux provides and I don't want to have to use reducers or React contacts. A new tool came under my radar in a very timely manner and I thought I'd make a video to share this with you guys and it's called Jotai. And Jotai is a really pleasant tool to work with when it comes to uh, managing global state in React because it introduces little to no boilerplate code and it's just so, such a pleasure to work with. If you have experience with Redux and you know, uh, and you have experience with creating reducers and uh, making context providers in React and doing prop drilling, a couple of layers, nested layers, passing props to, to children of children of children in React, you'll, you'll come to appreciate how simple Jotai is in terms of syntax. So here I have a very simple to-do list and I'm going to show you the code, right? So for the code, I have app.js, which is where everything happens. This is typically where, where you'd have the state variable in the parent component and then you will pass the to do's and set to do's function to the children of this component and then I have two children components I have the list component which is basically just this list that you see here and then I have another component which is the text field component which is responsible for this top part here that has the input field and the add button so let's see how we would use Jotai in this application, in this scenario. I'm gonna get rid of the state variables here because we don't need them anymore. Instead, I'm gonna go to my source folder. I'm gonna create a lib folder and have an atom.js uh, file in it. it. Can be any name, the file can have any name. It doesn't even have to be in the lib folder, but it's just the way I chose to structure my program. So in the atom.js file, I'm gonna just import a function called atom from Jotai. And with this function, I can create a new atom um, variable. So I'm going to const, um, let's say, to do atom equals to atom. So this is basically creating a new global variable. At atoms in Jotai is equal to global variables in React. So I've just created a new global variable here, and I initialized this variable with a value of an empty list. And I'm also going to export this variable because um, I'll be using this in other files and other components. And believe it or not, that's all that we had to do in this atom.js file. We can move on to the text field component now. So I'm just going to show you what the text field component looks like. It's this add button and the input field here. So basically what this code is doing right now is I have a button here that calls the handle add function when I click on it. And the handle add function does nothing but logs the current value from the input to the console. I'll show you an example. So I'll just say, hello there. Let's click on add and you see that the console prints hello there. So that's working ex as expected. And this last line, the handle add function basically just clears out the value from the input from the input field. So it just empties the value after we're done with it. So it resets the input field. All right, so now let's try and implement our uh, Jotai atom in this component. So the first thing we'll import is the use, to, uh, actually it's to do atom. Yeah, let's import to do atom from the file that we've just created. So I'm importing this to do atom variable. And once I have that, I'm gonna also import use atom from Jotai. So this use atom from Jotai, it's kind of like use state in React. And basically the way you use it is you come down here, you create to do's set to do's equals to use atom and we pass in to do atom into the argument so basically you can see how similar it is to the use state hook in react it's pretty much the exact same thing you have like the state variable and then you have the setter method and the setter function here can we all just take a moment and appreciate how clean this syntax looks compared to the other solutions that we may have so at this point, I'm pretty sure you're already, you're already familiar with how to use uh, functions like these because uh, it's just the same as use state. It's so intuitive. I can just do set to do's and I'll just get a, an old to do item. I'll use the spread operator here. Actually, I, it should be a list. Now let's use a spread operator. 
and we'll spread out the old to do items and then we'll add a new item to the list and we're getting the value from the input ref and then once we're done with that I'm just going to go out here and let's console.log to do's for now so that we can see if it's working or not let's go back to the app refresh it um, test one you can see that uh, it's printing array length of zero now if I click on add you see that array length of one it says test one let's add another string let's say test two and you see that test two is appended to the end of that, that array so it's so simple now that that's done I'm just going to take this line here copy it I'm going to go to my other component which is the list component and literally paste it in here I'll also just have to import use Adam again from Jotai. So I have the exact same code here, and instead of just hard coding a single text element here, I'm just going to use uh, to do's dot map. I'm going to map out for each to do item. Let's return a text element, and because we're in React, we have to of course pass in the key. Uh, I'll just use math dot random. Uh, this is not. Um, this is not ideal, so just try not to use math at random for simplicity's sake. I'm just gonna just keep it uh, at that. And then as a text, I'm gonna do to do uh, the to do itself. Yep. And let's see if it works. It's gonna give me an error. To do Adam is not defined. Of course, we have to import to do Adam as well. So that's the Adam that we are ex exporting from this file here. I'm gonna go and copy the import statement. Put it in here as well and let's see so it's empty for now I can say watch <laughs> let's do that and see that it's added we can say do the dishes it's gonna add it to the bottom and it's working perfectly now before we call it a day I'm just gonna show you one additional uh, utility that we can get out of uh, Jotai so look what happens when I refresh the page uh, we lose all of our state um, but what we can do is we can go to our Atom file here and instead of importing Atom from Jotai, we can import Atom with storage and uh, oops, whoops, we import Atom with storage from Jotai slash utils and then here instead of calling Atom, we call Atom with storage and then we set, we pass in the initialization value and we also have to pass in a key, uh, we can say to do or to do it's basically just a string it can be anything that you set it to be and then once we do this let's go and try this out I'm gonna say this should persist and I'm gonna do add I'm gonna go and close that page out and let's reopen the page and it does not work so Okay, that was a mistake on my part because I completely forgot that I had this Firefox extension um, that clears out local storage and all of the cache when I create a new tab. It's called uh, Firefox Containers and it's for privacy reasons I have that extension up. So instead of uh, doing that, I'll just open up a private Firefox window and I'll just go back to our app here. So we can just do test1, add test2, and then we can open a new tab, we go to localhost 3000 again, and we can clearly see that our state persists. So that's really neat, huh? Uh, Jotai can not only manage global state variables, you can also do local storage, and it makes our lives that much easier. Now before you go, I'm going to show you one last thing you can do to optimize re-renders in Jotai. So in my text field code here, I have a console log statement here to indicate that the text field re rendered every time uh, this field component gets rendered. So here in my console, you can see that text field is rendered four times. And when I say do the dishes in the text field, I click on add, the text field rendered statement is printed six times. So two additional re-renders from just this one action. But that's really inefficient because Technically, this add this input field component should, shouldn't even have to re-render every time we add a new component. Only this bottom component, this display component should have to re-render and not the input component up here. So what we can do is instead of using use Atom, we'll use the use set Atom function from Jotai instead, and we'll replace the use Atom hook using use set Atom instead. 
And you see that we don't even need to use the to do's state variable in this component. We're only writing to the global state. We're not reading from it. That's why we can completely just get rid of that. And we can just do it this way using the use set item function instead. So doing this, if I refresh the page, I can say test one. You see a text field re render is only twice. And I'll click on add. You see that the text field does not re render at all, it remains at twice. Yeah, that's pretty much about everything that I want to share about Joe Tai. This was a pretty light video, and yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry that it's been so long since I've posted anything. The truth is that I've been working on a really big project, and I actually made a completely separate video for it, and it's been taking up a lot of time, but now I don't even know if I just want to post it because it's a really garbage, trash video. So it's on my channel, but it's a private video, so I don't know what you guys think. Should I post it?